So with that, I will call um, the Town Council Personnel and Appointments Committee to meeting to order at 535. Um, all members are present, consisting of myself, uh, Chair Andre Bumgarner, uh, Councillor David McBride, and Councillor Scott Westervelt. Um, calendars and communications. Uh, do councillors have any communications? I've, uh, I have received various communications um, regarding the uh, planning and zoning, um, as well as the um, the historic commission. So we can talk about that when we get to those points. Okay. Yeah, I've received similar communication as well. Excellent. Yes, a, a, as I have. Um, all right. So with that, um, and we will submit uh, Betsy. I believe you shared um, the bulk of those communications. I'll, I'll be happy after the meeting or um, sometime tonight, um, or at least by the end of the week to go through to make sure that um, there was any co um, correspondence sent directly to me that I'll send them to you. Um, but I, I know that the clerk also has them um, in receipt. Um, I will ask though, um, I sent over, um, I, I'd only ask it that, you know, we, we would include them in the record um, that way, you know, folks um, do know that, so. Um, but, um, chairman, I just, you know, a lot of the things that you have on your agenda over mm -hmm. and then the rest of them are reappointments and one request to move an alternate up to on the HDC, but everything else is pretty cut and dry. Excellent. Thank you, Betsy. Um, all right. So, um, with that, um, I sent, uh, just a short time ago to just minutes. Um, what we'll do is also for tonight's meeting, um, we'll make sure I'll, I'll touch base with Betsy to make sure that we can include those letters into our, you know, the final record for approval for next week for uh, next meetings, uh, meeting minutes as well. Um, so with that, I will entertain a motion um, uh, to approve the um, August, I'm sorry. Um, yes, I, I will make a motion. Can, can you hear me okay? It's coming a little spotty. I, I somebody it sounded like somebody was talking, but um, folks have been coming in and out. I can hear you fine. All right, I can and, hear you fine. And same for you, Betsy. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, talk into the microphone. All right. All right. So um, with that, I'll make a motion to approve the August 16th meeting minutes of 2022. Second, Westerville. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All, all those in favor, please indicate Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, motion carries unanimously, 300. On to new business. Um, we have various uh, personnel appointments um, up for discussion this evening. Um, it may, it may I make a suggestion, sir? Yes. Okay, why don't you start with the oldest, which was a July 18th for reappointment for the Fair Rec Commission? Yes. Um, I, I do understand that suggestion. Um, I do want to get through some, some critical items just for, for purposes of time. And um, I do want to first address the fact that we have people in the audience um, who would like to have an interview. And one um, pending item um, that, was, uh, that could not happen at the last meeting was the interview for Mr. McDermott. Uh, Bruce McDermott. I know there were some uh, audio issues with that meeting, and so I do want to afford to Mr. McDermott since um, he did wait the entire, he participated in the entire meeting, and um, because of tef technical difficulties, was in, unable to per, to um, participate in an interview, which was afforded to another um, uh, applicant for the personal appointment. So, uh, out of respect of his time, I, I do, I would like to ask that he um, step forward for an interview for the purposes of alternate to personnel, um, to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And that would be Bruce McDermott. You'll have to move him over to panelist. Mr. McDermott. Give him a second. All right. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Let me turn the light off here. Yeah. 
Hopefully that's a little better. I thought little that was one of those normal. TikTok spotlights. Sorry. <laughs> well, Excellent. Well, Mr. McDermott, welcome to the uh, Personal and Appointments Committee meeting. Um, uh, very much appreciate your willingness to participate and serve on um, one of our boards or commissions, just as if you've, as you've done um, previously and in the past in uh, several volunteer capacities. So um, just want to thank you for your interest and in continued service to our town. And um, we'll open the floor up to questions from uh, members of the committee. Um, I, I know you, um, again, participated in the last meeting, so you're familiar with our process. So um, yes. very informal uh, discussion and um, just want to get a sense of maybe some uh, as to why um, you are interested in serving on uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'm on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals currently, and uh, so I'm a bit familiar with the zoning that we have in town. And really, uh, it it's uh, of a particular interest of mine because we've had so many problems with the town in the last couple of years that I'd like to help alleviate that situation. And I really don't think there's anything more important than zoning. Uh, it goes beyond just residential and commercial. It really affects the character of the whole town. I live in Mystic, so we have some particular problems here. People in Noank have some particular issues that they have to deal with. But overall, uh, the, the way that we look at our town, and the way we interact with the people in the town, it really all comes down to zoning. I don't think there's anything more important than that. Absolutely. Um, uh, counselors, do you have any questions for Mr. McDermott? Yeah, this is Councilor Brian. I just have one question. I, I appreciate willingness to serve uh, Mr. McDermott and, uh, you know, been, been watching a lot of your, um, your information, your, your tenacity uh, for certain things in the, in the town. My, my question is really, um, are, do you feel that you'll be comfortable uh, in, in being unbiased in certain things? I know you have uh, a certain view, I think, on short-term rentals. And my only question of concern would be, have you already made your mind up on certain zoning matters? And do you have a willingness to be flexible? I'm not saying to be for them. I just want to make sure there's a willingness to be somewhat open and not completely uh, down the path. Because when I choose someone to be on a committee, I want that person to be, they may have strong views, but they still need to be open to, to, to comments and be willingness to hear the other side. And I, I have a question and concern on, on your ability to do that. So I would just like to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. Well, I've, I've been on uh, various commissions and boards for a long time. Uh, chairman of the Board of Education, um, on the RTM, mentoring in the school system. Um, and I think uh, that for sure, I can keep an open mind on things. The, the uh, current controversy with regard to the short-term rentals, my wish is that it go before the Planning and Zoning Commission, which I'm not now a member, but that's where I think it all belongs. And that's happened. So I'm happy with that. Um, I think they'll make a, a decision that we all can live with. And that's really the people that should make the decision because these folks, have their charter from the state of Connecticut, not the town, uh, they can be pretty unbiased, I think, in the way that they think. And I certainly think that I can keep an open mind. I've shown that before, I believe, in the positions that I've held. So I don't have any uh, concern with regard to that. Uh, I hope that uh, kind of answers your question. It does. And I just would, you know, would love you to encourage that open mindedness. And I appreciate you willing to, to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Sure. Um, Mr. McDermott, um, reading through your, your resume before and then seeing the bullet points on this uh, application, uh, you've been a, a volunteer for the city or for the town for many, many years, I see. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I applaud you for that. Um, I've seen you in the past. Um, I've seen some of the stuff that you've done. And I, I think it's very, very impressive. Um, are you... Now, it says currently on the Groton Beautification Committee and Groton Zoning Board of Appeals, and I apologize for not being 100% um, up on this, but are you going to have to drop one of those to take this on? Uh, no, the uh, Beautification Committee 
we just had a meeting last night, for instance. Um, I am pretty much the, uh, for want of a better word, the resident artist that is kind of uh, uh, promoting things like murals and sculpture. I've got a sculpture of mine over at the uh, senior center uh, to start that whole process going in the town so that we can beautify it. Uh, the whole idea being that uh, we can uh, get people that come through Groton and just pass through, maybe give us a second look and stay, because I think that that's a, a real deal that we need to put together. Uh, we meet once a month. Uh, pretty much my own time is spent with regard to putting together anything like brochures or logos or dealing with artists. It's what I do anyway in my spare time. So that's not a problem for me. I don't do any of the planting of flowers and so forth that uh, the other folks do. They're much better at that than I am. And uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, they rarely meet. Uh, they do meet, but it's not anywhere near as often as you might expect. The last couple of meetings uh, were canceled. Um, we just generally don't have many things come up before us, but it's important to know what the uh, the zoning board, the uh, zoning rules are, of course, for, for things like that. But no, it's not a, a meeting that is, uh, doesn't take up anywhere near the time that the town council does, for instance, or the board of education or the RTM. Not at all like that. Well, I recognize that you have, um, I recognize that with your you know, Board of Education, RTM, you obviously know a, a number of people. You've been around the town for a long time. Um, and so I think you'll be able to work with a lot of those um, individuals as they yes. come to you for different things. So I appreciate your, your candor. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Westervelt. My only other question, um, Mr. McDermott, would be obviously the plan of conservation and um, develop POCD, the plan of conservation and development is the uh, guiding document that the town uses um, as in the commission uses um, to uh, guide their decision making process um, as far as you know, compliance with our uh, zoning regula regulations. And so um, my question to you is, do you believe that the POCD is a, um, you know, written by the uh, zoning commission in, plan in, in conjunction with the planning commission um, is a good document and a good uh, guiding force for developments in our, in our town? Uh, I'm not sure that I'm familiar with what you, you're talking about, Councillor Baumgartner. What is that? Our uh, plan of conservation and development here in the town? Well, I've not read the, the document in its entirety, is, uh, but uh, so can you enlighten me a little bit about what that uh, is? Yes, yes. Uh, so the plan of conservation and development is, um, you know, a, a document with guiding principles for the town to follow as far as, you know, how we ought to uh, develop our community in the future. So, you know, what we should uh, focus on and, and um, okay, all right, yeah, I know. Yes, I've got you now. Yeah, uh, that is off. Part of that is incorporated in the actual zoning um, uh, information that we all get when we get on any of these zoning boards. Uh, yes, that that's an excellent document. <coughs> it has a, a lot of great features in it. Um, it's an optimistic document, I think. Looking forward, uh, yes, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. McBride, I, I see, Councilor McBride, I see you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. I just, I, I, I'm a little confused because I, I was under the understanding, maybe incorrectly, that if, if uh, Mr. McDermott moves on to that committee, that he may need to uh, resign from the ZBA. So I'm not sure if we can get uh, Clerk McCausher thought on that because that, that's how I understood it. I just wanted, didn't know if that was true or not. Yeah, that's, that's why I had my hand up. Uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, we, we are guided by the town charter and the town charter states that committees and commissions and agencies that are um, formed by Connecticut general statute, which are all of our major committees. So ZBA, historic district, uh, planning and zoning, uh, town council, so forth. Anywho, you can't serve on more than one board. And 
Mm. So we can, I think it's designed so you spread the wealth, so to speak. So he would have from EA, but not the, um, not the uh, beautification committee. I don't want to lose him on that. Uh, but the, that's a appointment. You know, the town council created that. It wasn't precipitated by the general statutes. Does that answer your question? Yes. Well, that's something I wasn't aware of. That's uh, interesting. Well, uh, if that's the case, uh, then I guess I would have to do that. I would do that. Yeah, just ZBA, but not beautification. Right. Yes. Right. In, in, uh, yes, Councilor McBride. Yeah, thanks. So just are on the same page. We've already moved forward with, with Mr. McDermott's uh, move already. The council approved that. So, right, this isn't, we're not acting tonight. This has already been done. We approved this last meeting or a meeting ago, correct? And the council approved. Um, no, no, we, uh, we have not. So if, if we can, if we recall um, what transpired at our previous council meeting, um, we, we made a motion to appoint Steve Hudacek to the Planning and Zoning Commission, elevate him from an alternate member to a regular, a full uh, regular voting member. At, um, it was his nomination was passed unanimously by this committee. Each of us supported his nomination. And then when it got to the floor, we all, and, and actually part of the reason we didn't advance any of the alternates was because of, again, that technical difficulty issue. So uh, what transpired was when um, we made the nomination in the council vote for Mr. Huda to elevate Mr. Huda check, the council, um, you know, a counselor made a motion to uh, recommend appointment of a different applicant for somebody who had applied as an alternate as a full voting member. And so um, we took no action on any of the alternate applications. Okay, thank you for that. I recall that now, I just had a... Thanks. Councilor Westervelt. However, we did uh, move um, Mr. Hudasek up to the regular panel, the regular member. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. So um, that, that position was filled by Mr. Hudasek. And so we still have two open um, alternates, I believe. That is right. That's correct. If you needed verification, that is correct. You're perfectly on target, guys. Thank you. Yes, and I um, do. Councilors have any other questions for Mr. McDermott? I'm fine. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right. Well, Mr. McDermott, thank you so much for um, your willingness to serve on a board or, board or commission. Uh, once again. I apologize about the, um, again, the technical difficulties at our last meeting, but glad we had the opportunity to speak with you. Um, obviously you have a, a wealth of knowledge um, and um, are a very committed public servant and volunteer to our town. And so um, just for the record, I, I do wanna state that and, and thank you for your continued sir, interest in serving. And um, I, uh, should you need anything, obviously please reach out to uh, the clerk, uh, town clerk as well. Thank you, Councilor, appreciate right. that. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. All right. Thank you. Uh, now, just some housekeeping, um, Madam Clerk, I'm just looking at the kind of the calendar of when um, certain appointments are going to come up um, in the near future, I understand that there will be a, a planning and zoning, regular planning and zoning commission member that will be up for reappointment shortly. I did notice that um, a lot of the applications for approval this evening are kind of uh, proactively appointed or you know, making a recommendation to reappoint members with a term expiring sometime in December. And I did notice that one, app, um, one um, application for renomination uh, uh, was um, missing in, in likely because um you know maybe uh, just the the chair of the the board of the commission hasn't gotten to it yet or or is waiting until the next meeting but i just wanted to clarify that i understand that there will be um uh, mr kane for example michael kane a current planning and zoning commission member um his term would be expiring at the um in december is that correct 
Boy, I'm looking. Uh, memo and hmm, yeah, I've got a I've got a new person in my office who's helped me and she's very officious and already filed it. Um, without pulling, well, I've got the agenda the uh, thing in the bob right here. Excellent. Oh, you said planning and planning and zoning. Yes. Planning and zoning. Um. <laughs> uh, it's alternate positions. That I don't, uh, and one, uh, Michael Kane is a December. You know, it's possible that Jeff Pritchard just didn't um, grab that one. I, he's very good, so he'll get it for your next meeting. Okay, and and I mentioned that um, because it, and just as far for the plan, um, personal appointments committee, um, I I would hate to have what transpired at our uh, last council meeting where we took up personnel uh, took up personnel items uh, to happen again. Um, obviously, with the vacancy of that significance coming up on the horizon, uh, you know, so should we advance any alternates, a similar move will be made to fill um, what would be an expiring term for the regular council. Um, so, you know, obviously, there's a lot of moving parts to this. And I, I see, you know, obviously, even for uh, something as, um, you know, as I shouldn't say minor, but um, our personnel and appointments committee is certainly well attended. I think has been more well attended than uh, most personnel committees in you know in my time on on the council. So um, I do want to handle these matters with um, due dil with you know with uh, you know significant due diligence to ensure that we are um, you know treating all of our applicants fairly and with respect, and that um, you know truly duly and qualified members um, you know. Um, will not be subject to any petty politics. Um, so my my uh, question is, um, you know, at this point now, actually, it's not really a question, but I would just share with the personal appointments, given that matter, uh, I'm very uncomfortable taking up uh, any application for the alternate position until we um, reappoint the member to the, um, the member who is expiring or uh, whose term will be expiring at the end of the year to that committee uh, to ensure that um, when we provide our list of recommendations to the personnel and appointments committee, I mean, sorry, uh, our personnel and appointments committee recommendations to the council, that um, you know our recommendations will be treated uh, fairly and equitably, and um, because of procedural rules, um, you know it, it, our recommendations, you know, will not be impacted. Um, if that makes sense, gentlemen. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, really, um, you know, you have to understand that statutes are very in your appointment commission, regardless of your term expiration, you're a board member. Uh, you could have an exp expiration for five years, you're still a board member. So mm -hmm. concern myself, if I were on this board with uh, Mr. Kane's pen term expiration, but you have two gaping holes. And I'll tell you, with somebody's sick, so those are very important to fill. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait on those. All right. Uh, you, you, you. Councilor Westervelt? Uh, Councilor, sure. Councilor McBride, any, any comment? No, I mean, I can see where you're, where you're coming from. I'm just looking, you're still I mean, I, I can see both your points, but I, I think it's important to fill those alternates. There's still four others uh, that are on the committee. And I'm just thinking a worst case scenario, if, if someone doesn't show, you would, need, you would need those alternates to fill those spots in order to have a quorum. So I can see where, where, where the clerk's coming from. Uh, but I do, I do appreciate your, your valuing the importance of Michael Kane. Um, making sure that, that that term is renewed. So I think, although that's critical, I think that should that should still be able to be completed by next month. I mean, I can't, I think we can do all, everything. Can we, can we do it all? I mean, can't we, um, can we fulfill the alternates and make sure that Mr. Kane is reappointed? 
uh, not without, again, perhaps unintended consequences when it comes to a council vote. I just want to warn the council um, in my time and, you know, having served for almost five years on this town council, um, in the past when personnel and appointments have made recommendations to the council, uh, not only were they passed unanimously, but they were passed on consent without any issue. Um, almost every meeting uh, that has been challenged since we have uh, started this year, this term, every, almost every meeting where we voted on personal appointments, where um, a member of our council has removed a name or two or a slate of names from the consent calendar for an individual vote. So I, I, I very much respect for your coming from um, Councilor McBride, but I, out of respect to our applicants, out of respect of, again, the process that we've established for years and the precedent we have established for- I, I hate to interrupt issue. you. I, I, I really I have to. I, I'm sorry, I fundament, uh, uh, Madam Clerk. Point of order fundament, here. Madam Clerk. <laughs> it's I, a point I, of order. You're way, way Ma out. Madam Clerk. I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman, but you, you know, statutes take press. Madam Clerk. And, and there's no way that the town council could ever unseat a term that isn't explained is fine. But your 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 gaping holes are maybe a problem. On the council for time in comparison to my tenure with working with all of the boards and commissions, even before I was town clerk. And it's only recent he, the council had uh, boards and commissions under consent. It was a uh, that started on it was a new there's reasons for it and i don't want to belabor because you've got time here to get the work done so i don't want to belabor this but please uh pay um don't worry about you know come in strong you've got a good you've got a good group here and absolutely and I, I would just leave it really on on this final note just as much as you know again um, what had transpired as far as our our boards or commission approvals go within our regular council, um, just like the uh, individual council members have their own, any prerogative or the ability to do such a thing, we also have the ability not to advance applicants through this committee. So I, you know, I, I think out of that process, and certainly I, you know, th there is again an established precedent to, um, you know, to respect our, uh, all of the applications um, and certainly the recommendations of, of this committee. Um, and certainly we're not right, you know, always right. I'm not saying all three of us, we have, you know, the right answers to all the problems, but I do think again, you know, Councilor Westervelt, myself and Councilor McBride do represent a cross spectrum of, of um, view, you know, viewpoints here in our town. And so when, you know, we um, can come to, to an agreement on, on um, qualified candidates for boards or commissions, I, I would hope that, you know, certainly um, the entire process, especially, you know, from our council, that, that um, you know, that, that, that work is respected as well. Um, so I, I'm speaking as a chair for a, a committee I'm very proud of. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a committee consisting of, of great members and, and great support, including uh, from yourself, um, Madam Clerk. So, um, you know, I, I just want to state that for the record, um, but um, obviously we got a lot of business to get to. So, um, Councillor Westervelt, Councillor McBride, um, certainly respect your uh, perspective and point of view on this. Um, I just want to ask uh, one question just for clarification. So, is there um, the makeup of this, because I don't have it in front of me, the planning and zoning, how many permanent members are there and how many alternates? Um, there are five permanent members and three alternates. Is three that correct, Madam Clerk? Yes, that is correct. You've got five regular members, the alternates. And we currently have two vacancies for personnel and appointments committee uh, for, al the, uh, for alternate positions. Two alternates on the Planning and Zoning Commission, yes. And as of now, two applicants. And you have Town Red Heed and applied for them. Okay. Thank you. I'm just still contemplating all of this, but thank you.
All right. So um, with that, unless uh, you know somebody's willing to make a motion, I I have plenty of uh, candidates I'd like to advance out of um, personal appointments this evening. All right. I'm not prepared to make a motion at this time. Excellent. Um, Councilor McBride. No, I'm going to uh, follow your direction. You have more experience than I do on this, so I will uh, follow your recommendation. All right. Um, so with that, we have a series of or a, a host of uh, applicants that submitted applications for appointment or reappointment to the Personnel and Appointments Committee. Um, first and foremost, a reappointment to the Shellfish Commission. Um, I will make a motion to reappoint Stephen Jones, Democrat of 11 Chesboro Ave in Newank to the Shell Shellfish Commission with the term expiring 12-31-2027. Any McBride, discussion? McBride will second that. All right. Motions made by Baumgartner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously, 300. On to the reappointment of Jay Loudon, Democrat, 17 Satcham Road, Noink, to the Shellfish Commission with the term expiring 12-31-2027. So moved. Second, Westervelt. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously, three zero zero. Now to the reappointment, an alternate of Thomas, um, reappointing Thomas Weeks as an alternate to the Harbor Management Commission of one 10 Irving Street in Mystic with the term expiring 9 01 2025. So moved. McBride second. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously 300. Now on to the reappointment of Barbara Nagy, unaffiliated who is the secretary of the library board of 201 Broad Street in Groton with the term expiring 12-31-2021-25. So moved. Second, Westervelt. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor, by indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention. Motion carries unanimously, three zero zero. Now on to Marilyn Comrie, non-affiliated. Um, reappoint, um, I'll make a motion to reappoint Ms. Comrie of 566 Sandy Hollow Road in Mystic to the library board with a term expiring 12-31-2025. So moved. McBride, second. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by McBride. Any, any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries unanimously 300. Now on to the reappointment of Carol Pratt, Democrat, Secretary of 124 Ridgewood Drive in Mystic. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, reappoint Ms. Pratt to the re retirement board with the term expiring 12 31 2026. So moved. Second, Westervelt. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously 300. Now on to Jeffrey Blevins, unaffiliated voter, who's also the treasurer of the Jabez Smith House. Um, I'll make a motion to reappoint Mr. Blevins of 17 Ashby Street, Mystic, to the Jabez Smith House Committee with the term expiring September 7, 2026. So moved. McBride, second. Motion by Baumgartner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose, abstention, motion carries unanimously 300. Now on to Richard Dixon, a Democrat of 15 Route 27, Old Mystic. Um, I'll make a motion to reappoint Mr. Dixon to the Jabez Smith House Committee 
with the term expiring 9-7-2026. So moved. Second, Westervelt. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously 3-0-0. Now on to the reappointment of Scott Risotto, a Republican, to the, 20, uh, to, uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Mr. Risotto of 25 New London Road, Mystic. His term, should he be appointed, will expire on 12-31-2027. So I'll make a motion to reappoint Mr. Risotto to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So moved. Second in McBride. Motion by Baumgartner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously 3-0-0. Now on to the reappointment of William Menser, a Republican, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Menser of 476 New London Road, Mystic, to the Zoning Board of Appeals with the term expiring 12-31-2029. So moved. Second, Westerbelt. Motion by Bumgardner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. In, um, uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously, 3-0-0. Now on to the reappointment of Douglas Smith, non-affiliated voter, um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate. Mr. Smith lives at 37 Island Circle here in Groton. So I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Smith to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, with the term expiring 12-31-2027, so moved. McBride seconded. Motion by Baumgartner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention, motion carries unanimously 3-0-0. Now on to the appointment as an alternate of Dana Samararo, a Democrat to 202 High Street in Mystic, uh, to the Community Development Advisory Committee, the term expiring 2-7-2024. So I'll make a motion to appoint Ms. Samararo as an alternate to the Community Development Advisory Committee. So moved. Second, Westervelt. Motion by uh, Bumgarner, seconded by Westervelt. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously 3-0-0. Now on to the reappointment of Marie Shaw, who is currently the vice chair of the library board. Make a motion to, uh, uh, um, lives at 20 Colony Road in Groton. I'll make a motion to reappoint Ms. Shaw to the library board with the term expiring 12-31-2025. So moved. Seconded, McBride. Motion by Bumgarner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Um, seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries unanimously. Um, I will note just as far as the Fair Rent Commission goes, um, Betsy, I think we, we ought to talk offline. Um, if you have concerns that right now as of uh, the compliance for the criteria that certain board members have to meet to serve on the Fair Rent Commission. Um, it's hi highly specific as far as um, how many folks can be appointed who are either a renter or a landlord, um, and as well as the um, uh, ensuring that there's compliance as far as um, minority representation. We can talk offline on that, but I'm not comfortable at this time moving forward with those applications until that is clarified. And um, lastly, um, already we went over um, the issue, um, we already discussed um, the applications for planning and zoning commission. Um, I, at this time, do not feel comfortable advancing any alternate um, or appointments um, without um, completing the, or um, making a motion to reappoint a, the member to the um, regular member to the person, to the planning and zoning commission. Um, so with that, I have no other um, business unless- Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've got, you missed, you missed Dominic Casey for Parks uh, and Rec and Mark Olfinger for the retirement board. Oh, we, I appointed my, Mark, we we were appointed Mark Offringer to the um, retirement. Dominic, board. Dominic Basie. I think we skipped um, over both of them. We skipped yeah. Mr. Offringer. Yes. Yes. We and Basie. Yes. Yes. All right. My apologies. That was an oversight. And uh, and Dominic Basie for the Parks and Re uh, Parks and Rec Commission. Yes. He's thank the you. Thank, He's the chair. Thank Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. We'll We'll actually we'll tackle from the top and work our way down from that. Um, so thank you again. 
Um, I will make a motion to reappoint Dominic Bassey, a Democrat chair of uh, to uh, the Parks and Rec Commission. Mr. Bassey lives at 951 Eastern Point Road. So I'll make a motion to reappoint Mr. Bassey to the Parks and Recreation Commission with the term expiring 12-31-2027, so moved. Nick Bride will second. Um, thank you. Um, motion by Bumgarner, seconded by McBride. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose, abstention, motion carries unanimously 300. And I'll also make a motion, and thank you again for uh, pointing out the oversight, I'll make a motion to reappoint uh, Mr. Mark Offinger, an unaffiliated voter who is currently the vice chair of the uh, retirement board, 201 Broad Street. Make a motion to reappoint Mr. Offinger to the retirement board with a term expiring 1231-2025. So moved. You also um, have, um, you also uh, have a- Let's complete the vote. Um, oh, I'm sorry, your vote, I thought your vote went through. Uh, well, it just we're going to do it again just for uh, we can't obviously watch the meeting, uh, the, the meeting right now on the YouTube channel has been uploaded yet. Uh, it's happening in real time. So um, just just for uh, safety purposes, I'll um, just make sure we cover our tracks. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Do we have McBride will second. Scott's uh, busy, I think. All right, uh, motion by Bumgarner, seconded by uh, McBride. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose, abstention, aye. motion carries unanimously, 300. And I heard, I heard you, Scott. Um, all right. Mr. Uh, Goodman, and he's in waiting for you. Okay, yes. Um, And we have his application for reappointment. Thank you. Okay, excellent. I will. Letters and so forth. You've got a lot of stuff. Yes. All right, I will elevate Mr. Goodman. Hello, Mr. Goodman. It's not instant. How's it going, Mr. Goodman? Uh, welcome to the Personnel and Appointments Committee meeting. Um, we understand you have submitted an application for reappointment to the uh, Historic District Commission. And uh, like we avail every uh, applicant, for appointment or reappointment, uh, avail the opportunity for you to make your case to the council as far as, uh, to the um, personal appointments committee as far as why um, you ought to be reappointed uh, or why, um, um, in, and certainly why uh, you're interested in uh, serving or continuing to serve on our board of commission. Uh, first and foremost, wanna thank you for your service uh, to the historic district commission. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, uh, we have the unique task of, of appointing folks to our various ABCs. And so with that, you know, I, um, I've watched and reviewed many uh, meetings in our uh, town, you know, town government, and certainly the, um, that would include the Historic District Commission. And so I've seen your work and just want to thank you again for um, your service to our town um, and your willingness to volunteer and serve our community. Um, so with that, I will um, ask any, um, well, I'll certainly ask you um, if you would like to share a few words as to, as to why you'd like to serve on uh, the historic, continue to serve on the Historic District Commission. Sure. Um, thank you, Councillor. Actually, just to save your time, I think that my letter that I submitted this morning pretty much outlines um, my point of view um, with regards to serving on that commission. Um, you know, I've served on it for a couple of years now, and I'd like to continue my position and serve on it going forward. Um, but I think that that letter pretty clearly identifies uh, where I stand. So I guess um, I'd turn it over to you if you have any questions or your other counselors. Uh, Councilor Westervelt or, or Councilor McBride, do you have any questions? I, I don't at this point. I haven't fully reviewed. I know there's there was some information that came across today. I haven't reviewed it entirely, but I'm, I think I will have some questions in the future, but not at this time. I apologize. I have not had a chance to review that letter um, as well as some other emails that have come in. So 
I'm not prepared to ask questions at this time. Okay, and um, Matt, Madam, Madam Clerk. Yes, I'm here. I, I do have a question. Um, you know, maybe not so obvious to the public, but we did receive correspond a series of correspondence from a lot of different folks regarding this particular reappointment. Um, I understand, and it was highly uh, irregular, but the chair of the committee did not recommend his uh, reappointment. Uh, did include in the app, uh, failed to include any application or any information within the application uh, when, well, let me back up, I apologize. Uh, failed to include any information within the reappointment application um, as far as why um, Mr. Goodman ought not to be reappointment, reappointed, just simply check the box that says, nope, chair does not recommend reappointment. And then uh, additionally included Incorrect information regarding the number of me meeting, uh, you know, number of meetings the, the applicant did or did not uh, attend. Um, there, it seems like there was an oversight on on that per on the chair's part as well regarding how many meetings the um, uh, Mr. Goodman attended when in fact he attended far more than what was uh, included in that application. So, was there um, just for your record from your your office any clarifying? information regarding that? Yes, uh, I can speak extensively to this uh, issue. So you are so right that the reappointment application, you know, you had to look at it twice like a regular you know, reappointment uh, to notice that she had circled no. <laughs> and so, but I have to tell you that uh, the chairman is commission and uh, that's effective uh, as of as of the fifteenth October, and um, so you know, there's there's a uh, to be said any of the historic district commissions meetings from March till pre till current till the last one, you'll get a very thing about the role of all of the members, and um, it seems to me that there's. Um, you know, there's always a point drawn back to the regulations that Mr. Goodman, because he's so he's so um, advised items that it's it was very evident that he was important to the chairman of the meetings. And then um, when they had a disagreement, things kind of went south. <laughs> so, but I didn't see I didn't see any reason. You know, you want to you want a commission with 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 the, you can't all be uh, wearing green pants, you know. <laughs> so, this, there is a letter that uh, the chairman sent that you all received, uh, and it's lengthy, but it still is really vague. it's quite vague. Uh, uh, there, there, the attendance is not he has not missed things, so erroneous. Uh, so, and um, lots of information that if you haven't read it, you should read it. There's no hurry to, to, to do this either. Yes, and, and, I, and I have, and, and in your judgment, Madam Clerk, would it be inappropriate for this council to move forward with an application based off of uh, accusations, to say the unsubstantiated accusations, to say the least? Heavens to Betsy, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's like saying, because you voted one way, to, to run for re-election. I mean, it's exactly what this this is boiling down to. I, vote I, my I'm way. Sorry, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. I missed you when uh, your 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 thesis statement. I I'm sorry. I'm in Eastern Point. We have a lousy service <laughs> here. But the, the point being, if you disagree with with one of your board members, that's not a reason to throw them out of the, off the board. If you voted some way that the that that some would it be right for them not to to let you know have you run for re-election? You know what I'm saying? It's really uh, we we went through this before with with the council trying to and did recreate the history and it and it kind of backfired and we're seeing that repercussion now. But you so it's coming back to a real commission. It's not just a rubber stamp anymore. 
Thank, thank you for that, Madam Clerk. So in, in again, just to be clear in your judgment, um, nothing should or preclude um, our council moving forward with this application at this moment, or would it yeah, be- Yeah, you so? could do it. Absolutely, there's no reason for him, but there's no rush to. Okay. I'm, I just wanna say, um, whatever you decide to do, um, uh, obviously like I, I appreciate your time and, and I think you should do what you you feel is right. If you do choose to move forward on tonight, I would still encourage you to read both the letter from her and my letter, um, which was sent after her letter in response to her letter, just to get a sense of what I think is a problem in the town currently um, with regards to development and um, you know, how certain boards and commissions that are land use related are taking um, or are liberal with the regulations, I should say. Um, I, you know, I, I'm in a very unique position, as I say in the letter, I'm a developer and a builder. So I make my money by building and developing. However, the rules and the regulations are in place. And when we sign up for these committees, um, you have an obligation to follow those, whether or not you agree with them. Um, as you asked the gentleman earlier about the planning and zoning committee, you know, he may have his preconceived determinations, but he can't walk into a meeting with those in mind. He needs to walk into the meeting with the rules and regs. And here, you know, I did that in on numerous occasions and followed them, even though I didn't always agree with them, but I followed them. Other commission members who have now resigned did not. And that's a problem. So I would say if you choose to move forward, please still read the letters because I think you just should be aware of a sentiment from the residents of, you know, let's slow down, let's take our time, let's follow the rules and a counter argument from certain individuals, some staff, some board members that are saying, no, let's build, 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 who cares what happens? And it's, it's gonna have an impact on the town that I care a lot about. Wow. Um... Very poignant words, and uh, certainly uh, just as somebody who has observed uh, the Historic District Commission, I, I do recall uh, a very courageous vote you took um, to uh, save um, the historic cottage in the downtown core that was set to be raised. And in fact, it, um, the state did intervene, and um, as a result, that home was saved, but it, um, it, the state had to intervene because of the actions of the Historic District Commission and you, um, if I recall, voted to um, to save that cottage. Um, so I did. So and again, I just remind you, I mean, I'm, and I say this in the letter too, like my business comes from the architects and engineers that appear in front of that commission. And even ones that I've worked for and work for me, I will still and do vote and argue for what the rules say, not what I personally feel. Um, and that has hurt me financially at times, and that's fine because that's a choice to make as a public servant um, or a public appointee or whatever the term is, but you need to follow the rules. If you don't want to follow the rules, you shouldn't be on these commissions. May I add also, Chairman, that there is a vacancy, resignation of Sarah Moriarty, um, and um, after her resignation she did actually submit uh, a suggestion that um, William Ferguson be moved into the uh, vacancy. So that's, you You just received that today. You don't need to work on that until next month. Okay. All right. And just to be clear for uh, the term, what was the uh, Mr. Goodman's expiring term for the Historic District Commission? Uh, the the, ex the expiration date for the term that he is uh, set to vacate. Can I just jump in for one second? I have 2026. to apologize. Um, I have to actually go to the commission, so I'm going to leave you on and I can jump in if you need no, me. Okay, but we're, we're all set, Mr. Goodman. Thank you. It's a 2026. Uh, so it's the same 12 31 2026. All right, thank you. Um, so um, with that, I, I will make a motion to a reappoint uh, Mr. Eric Goodman of the Historic District Commission um, with the term expiring 1231-2026. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? <laughs> yes, it is. I keep uh, jumping back between the stove, so. <laughs> 
All right, so moved. Uh, motion by Bumgarner, seconded by West. <coughs> Any discussion? Yeah, I have a couple of comments. I, I'm not I'm not opposed to Mr. Goodman for what he sounds like. He sounds like a terrific individual and in making the right decisions. But what I am opposed to is is um, approving something that I haven't read when there's three or four letters that have come out today and I haven't read them all. And, and my apologies, but I don't like to read, you know, I can't be held uh, responsible for not reading something a couple hours before. So I, I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not opposed to moving forward. Mr. Gunman sounds genuine and I, I will probably move forward with him, but I think I, I need more time to review this uh, in lieu of all the letters that are being passed around. It's especially, you know, considering there were two on this earlier this evening that we were moving to another meeting for numerous other reasons that we've reviewed you know, numerous times over the last few months. So I'm, I'm hesitant to move forward so quickly on his, uh, his, his movement. Uh, so I'm, I will be abstaining from this vote uh, because I think we need a little more time. Although I do believe I'll be voting in favor of him, just not, uh, you know, under, under the gun sort of say. Thank you. Um, um, I'd like to withdraw my second, um, just because I do, I do agree. I got caught up there for a minute, but I, I do agree. I think we do need a little more time to move forward with this. Absolutely. And I, I, I certainly hear your um, perspective as well, Mr. McBride. Um, I do know that we, we have been in receipt um, for, I think, a little over a month that the application for reappointment, um, um, actually, or lack thereof. Um, but with that said, you know, as I mentioned, I have a dear amount of respect for each of you and um, want to make sure you do have the time um, to review all of that information. So um, I am comfortable with that. And, um, and one, so one thing I want to ask ask for of the committee that, that you consider re reviewing the policy because this particular appointment I've been trying and I'm not kidding for almost two years to get her to you know get her to move on it and and other appointments so it's not just Mr. and just, just just to be clear, Madam Clerk, when did Mr. Goodman's term expire? Uh, it expired. Uh, last year, December of last year. And so we, you know, we, we are very diligent about keeping uh, communication with the chairs three months in advance of the, of, of the expiration. So you have time to get it onto the council agenda. But we may, we may, uh, we may want to move that to more like four months. I, I guess I jumped in for one second too. She also purposely tabled it and she admits that in her letter to you. And I, I guess my only other question would be, and I, I'm fine with you waiting, I understand that, but my understanding is the majority or, or all of the letters that you received were in favor of my reappointment, not any against except for her letter. So, I mean, believe, believe me, please take your time if you choose to take it, but if you're going to read five or six letters that all say I should be on it, I'm, I'm not sure how many times people need to tell you that. But I do understand what you're saying. Yeah, I guess I have a question. You know, I review this package comes out with a wealth of information and, in you know, it's 59, 65 pages long. And then I, I didn't see any of Mr. Goodman's information in this package. And then we get a revised package that has more information in it. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have an application or I don't have any other information other than the letter. So I'm just, you know, questioning. I'd like to review that information. That's all. I mean, I'm. No, and I understand what you're saying. I just, I also know that this we've been trying to get this reappointment done in one way or another. Um, you know, and, and I'm again, I'm happy to reappear. I'm happy to answer any questions you have tonight. I'm happy to tell you the entire story if you'd like to. It's it's up to you. Um, though I have 25 minutes, but <laughs> um, but I can do whatever it is you'd like to do. So it's it's really in your hands. No, and I don't think it's a matter of you appearing again. I think it's a matter of us getting information similar to what we received for all of these other reappointments and other appointments. I, I didn't, maybe I just missed the email. I don't have that information from, from Mr. Goodman. Is that because the chair who's resigned didn't provide that? And if that's the case, can someone else provide that to us? So we have, I just want to be consistent on our approach and how we're reviewing all these various appointments. seems like this is kind of off to the side. Like I don't have any paper. Am I missing something? You must be because I sent everything to uh, the chairman and to uh, town manager and town manager staff, and that's how that's that's the way things move to your committee. So and, and, I mean, and, I can I can send everything to everybody if you'd like me to. That's fine with me. I guess I'm just saying it's not in the you know we get this two page document that lists yeah. 
all of the all of the pieces of reappointments and appointments. It's not in that consolidated listing. And Chair, Chair, uh, well, uh, Council McBride and, and I, um, Madam Clerk, can back me up on this. Um, I have no inputs or anything to do with what is placed on the agenda as far as applications go. That process is entirely out of out of our hands as committee members. We are given a slate of candidates. We are not to intrude with that. We do not meddle with that. That is entirely uh, a collaborative effort between the town manager's office and our town clerk. Um, is that correct, Madam Clerk? Yes, but you should have received the packet October 3rd, according and to my did, records. Yes, we all did receive the that, that, yeah. for Mr. Goodwin uh, yep. Goodman sent to us um, via uh, correspondence was sent via email. Along with Ted Kitesman. Yes, that's, you're right. You know, we get, we get this, you know, this information sporadically also. And so we try to put together a meeting once a month. And sometimes we don't get things except the day of the meeting. It's, I don't, it, that's the way it works. Yeah, I guess I must have missed the email because I look at this document that comes out that has the consolidated listing as my base. Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't know. At least it didn't have it on there, but um, I, I, you know, I don't make the agenda either. So it just may have been, whoops, forgot it because it was October 3rd that it was sent to the, the Personnel and Appointments Committee. All right. So... What I do see, um, I do see the reappointment questionnaire, um, but that's all I see. There's no other additional documentation um, except for where it's circled as no. So that's kind of all we have to go by until we started getting all these letters. I think what happened was she sent in just that and only that after being repeatedly asked for that for over a year. And then at that point, And then trying to throw me off, which then resulted in me asking her for the reasons why, which she submitted that vague letter, which then I responded to in my letter. That's that's right, and that was all the fifteenth of October and today. All right. Well, uh, we, we've, we've met for over an hour now. Um, we will act on this application and please also extend. Um, I understand now there will be alternate positions opening as well, uh, Madam Clerk, and because of our in regular member. No, no, you've got, a, you've got a one alternate. No, excuse me. Ugh, do not get goofed up here. So. Sarah Moriarty, the chair, resigned. So there's a full member position available. And um, um, there's another one because of Bonnie Nault. So there's two full members missing. And the chair did suggest William Ferguson after she resigned. Uh, but, you know, still worth, it's worth its weight. You know, she served with him. Um, and... Uh, that's it. You don't have any other applicants. Oh, um, Ted Kitesman was the other person who should be considered as he's been attending all the meetings, but that, you know, you, ought to, you need to interview him. You need to interview yes. both Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Kitesman. Yes, and please, please extend for our next meeting the uh, opportunity for interview to those two candidates as well, Madam Clerk. Will do. Excellent. All right, uh, Mr. Goodman, any any final comments or any important information you'd like to share with us before we conclude this meeting? No, again, I just like, I guess to echo um, the, um, the points just made is that you have now three voting members, one not technically reappointed, but I, as we said earlier in the meeting can sit as long as until I'm not reappointed, I guess. Um, but it's going to be tough to get a quorum with that limited people. We, we did face that early on 
when I joined the HTC back in 2018, where I think we only had four members and it was it was tough. So, um, you know, again, I, I understand what you're saying. I just uh, would also just remind you that there are people that have applications. All right. Well, th again, Mr. Goodman, th thank you again for uh, joining us this evening. Um, we will uh, follow back up at our next meeting for a vote on the uh, for the historic district commission applications. Um, but uh, obviously, if you do need anything, please um, you know forward those correspondences to uh, or any clarifying questions, please forward those uh, correspondence through um, the clerk's office as we. Um, um, uh, have established the precedent that all communications for ABCs go through goes through her office uh, office, and she uh, disseminates that that information to all the committee members. Sure, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, Mr. Goodman. Thank um, you, counselors. Um, any any other business? No, so we'll take this up as well. All three of those positions up at the next the next meeting, right? Yes, and perhaps, in, and who knows, maybe by then there will, there, uh, there's a lot going on with that commission. So um, it's very much in flux. So uh, we may be appointing more uh, depending on how things go. So, um, but um, with that, I, I have nothing, no other business other than, I uh, just want to thank Madam Clerk. It was, uh, you know, a bit more of an eventful uh, committee meeting than usual. So thank you again for your indulgence, Madam Clerk. And um, your- uh, I'm here for, office. what I'm here for. I know, I know, but it, it's, uh, it's, you're off the clock, so, um, but your your um, service is, is appreciated. So just want to thank no, you. No, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And same for you guys, your counselors, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm elected, so that's how it works. <laughs> All right, so with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion by uh, the muted Council <laughs> Westervelt. I'll, I'll second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have a second from uh, Councillor McBride. Uh, Sorry about that. No, don't apologize. You just read your lips. Just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, um, I will call for a vote. All those in favor of adjournment indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously. Um, gentlemen, good evening. Madam Clerk, uh, good evening. And uh, uh, participants and Groton residents, thank don't you. Don't forget to stop the recording. <laughs> All right. Meeting has con concluded. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Have good a good night. night. <clears throat>